Dan Booknook Noggin, and I'm here with another TBR takedown. Um, this time I had finished reading The Dead Girls Club by Damian Angelica Walters. This clocks in around 280 pages. And I'm going to say that this is horror adjacent. Um, it's more, really, it's just a thriller. Um, and let's get into this. Um, I got a copy of this free from the publisher for a fair and honest review. And first off, I want to say that upon starting this, this really comes across as chick lit, kind of. And what I mean by that is it really comes across as one of those kind of book club kind of books where it seems to have all the elements that like a housewife, a group of, I could see a group of housewives wanting to read this for their book club because it kind of has all those little elements. It has like a kind of like a group of girls who are obsessed with true crime and, you know, just, you know, of course it's major selling point being a thriller. So I feel like to me it gave me chick lit kind of book club kind of vibes. Which, like, don't get me wrong, I enjoy thrillers every now and then, but this really... I, 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 there were elements of this book that I just did not care for. Um, we have the main character. I'm not going to go rehash the synopsis. If you want to know what it's about, you hopefully you already know what it's about because that's why you came here to watch my review. Um, it has a, a very strong thriller element going for it. We have the main character, Heather... We have a, um, her best, her BFF, Becca, and, you know, they buy these heart necklaces, you know, the best friends forever necklaces. It's set in the 90s, I think. Pretty sure it takes place in the 90s. And um, so, yeah, we have a number of other side characters that just, like, they kind of seem like not very important and they're in a very short part of the story. At times it seemed very messy the way the story kind of goes. Because it, I, w I do appreciate the fact that the author was very linear with it. She does a now and then kind of approach to telling the story. Because it goes back to the past then it flashes back to the present. And we kind of see how the main character, Heather, how she's dealing with how things had transgressed throughout the years. It's kind of weird and hard to explain. But, you know, like, Becca is her best friend, and Becca is a an abused kid. Um, her mom is an alcoholic who, you know, basically talks down to her, beats her up. And Heather comes from the loving, you know, the loving family. And I kind of related to the teenage Heather at times because I was that kid who only had a few small group of friends and I read a lot of Stephen King, you know, like, which a lot of kids weren't at the time. So I kind of related to her character. Um, one of the things I really found fault with and really thought was kind of weird and strange and didn't really jive with the, the story was that um, Becca, who's supposed to be Heather's best friend, was just a very unlikable character. She just, she was such a bitch at times. And I was just like, this is supposed to be her BFF? And I'm like, I just, I didn't understand that because like she kind of turned against her and took over her friends and this whole like Bloody Mary kind of legend. And like, they, they were like a little mini cult. And it was just so absurd. And I thought that it was kind of annoying how, you know, Heather's like, why are you being so mean to me, Becca? You know, just kind of really obnoxious. And just like, I didn't really care. I mean, I understand Becca's supposed to be the victim of the story. She's supposed to be the dead girl or whatever. You know, we should feel sorry for her because she's this abused kid. But she was such a bitch through most of the fucking story that, like, I didn't really feel sorry for her. I kind of hated her as a character. So that kind of did that for me, and it kind of, like, I, I don't know what the author was trying to achieve with that character. I just, it didn't, eh. But then we go back to the, the present, 
And the character of Heather seems kind of wishy-washy too because she's trying to track down these girls who she wasn't even really all that close with. They weren't even really all that great of friends to try to find out, you know, who's trying to blackmail her for the murder of her friend Becca. And, and there were times that that was kind of interesting because I love the now and then approach. There's sometimes where the now and then approach doesn't work in some stories, but I felt like it really worked for this story. And it did, the, it helped the pacing of the story for sure. Um, it really did help the pacing for me and the enjoyment of the book. But then when we get up to the ending of the book, it really just kind of does not 180 and things happen. And I'm just like, really? That's how you're going to end it? You're going to have this surprise plot twist and... One in which I totally, there was no, there was no, like, there was no little clues to say that this is what's going to happen. So it was totally unexpected. And I totally feel like that ending was just kind of, bleh. it was just kind of blah, you know, like, it just kind of, like, here's the ending. We're going to wrap it all up and this is it. This is how it's going to end. So, like, I really don't understand why so many people were like, this is a five star book, five stars five stars so I really just don't get it because like to me it felt like a half-hearted attempt at trying to end this and wrap it up in a way which kind of made somewhat sense but it felt very messy to me so like I really did not think that this book was all that great um don't get me wrong it's okay if you're just wanting something to pick up and read like if you're just looking for an entertaining read but it's not a great read, in my opinion. Um, just for the instances, I said I, I like the the you know the flashing back to the '90s. I think the '90s part of the story was probably the best part of the book. When you're talking, uh, when you're they're going over like the '90s culture and reading Stephen King and the way things were back then was kind of more interesting than the present day stuff. Like I said. Um, the young Heather was more likable than the older Heather, and she seemed really wishy-washy and kind of... I didn't like her as a character, uh, as the adult Heather. I just... And I absolutely hated the Becca character, which I think you're supposed to empathize and feel sorry for. just didn't work for me. The way it played out, um, the two side characters of Rachel and Gia were just kind of airheads and just... Yeah, it just didn't work for me. I thought they were kind of sideline characters that didn't really, they didn't really, they weren't necessary or integral to the story, so they didn't really help flesh it out or make it any stronger, I guess you could say. I mean, these th these four girls are the dead girls club, but it seemed to all center around Heather and Becca and their obsession with this red lady who was like a Bloody Mary kind of character. And the whole Bloody Mary and Teen Girls, you know, there's got to be a thesis for that, right? There's got to be a thesis around that kind of legend and all that. But, you know, I thought that it used, it did use some kind of elements that have been, they've been used before, so it wasn't 100% original in count. But, you know, I thought this was an okay book. I gave this a 3 out of 5 star rating on Goodreads. Um, it's worth picking up and reading. If I know it's like on the hype train. I think everybody wanted to read this book. Everybody was like, oh my god, this book is so good. you got to check it out. Um, I know that this author has written other books, but I'm not really motivated. I don't feel strongly enough after reading this to want to go check out her other stuff. So I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm not going to... I'm not going to go check out any past works. I'm not really motivated to read anything further if she writes anything else. I just, I felt this like this was a weak kind of story for me. And I really don't see all the hype in it. I really did not feel like it was that great of a book, to be honest with you. Um, it's an average three-star read for me. Um, I will have a link to Amazon for you folks in the U.S. if you want to check this out for yourselves. Um, of course, as always, I will have a link to my coffee if you want to help support my channel by donating to that. And if you came here looking for book recommendations and book reviews, by all means, hit that subscribe button and while you're there, hit that notification bell. Sorry for such a brief little kind of discussion about this book because, like, I don't know more or less what else to say about it. Um, it just kind of, like, was meh. You know, it was okay. 
Um, I've read better, better thrillers like uh, Riley Sager. I'm, I've read better thrillers by him and a couple other people. Like, if this is my first impression of Damien Angelica Walters, then, you know, it didn't really impress me the first time around. That's all I got to say. So, yeah, The Dead Girls Club. You can go check it out if you want, but I didn't think it was all that great. It was okay. Till next time, this has been Dan. Stay healthy and be good to each other.